Today, you are going to get a memorable front row seat to the incredible Springbok career of AJ Fenter. AJ, welcome to Front Row Rugby. Thanks, uh, Peter. Lucky to be on here. It's great to have you here. AJ, before we get started, let's take a look at this week's trivia question. At the 2011 Rugby World Cup, the Springboks faced Fiji, Namibia, Samoa, and which other nation in their pool? Now, if you know the answer to the question, you can put it in the comment section down below, and we'll also find out if AJ knows the answer, but we'll do that at the end of our conversation. AJ, I would like to begin our conversation in the late 90s. I remember you bursting onto the local scene in provincial rugby with the Free State Cheaters in those days, and everybody was saying, this man is going to be a Springbok very, very soon. And I'm talking about 1997, 1998 here. How frustrating was it for you that you had to wait until 2000 to actually make your test debut? Yeah, so 19, uh, interesting. So in, in, in 1994, I don't, this is going to be good to see you know this. In 1994, I want to say, I'm, I think it's 1994, the, cheat, the Free State played the Lions in a Curry Cup final in the uh, Cricket Oval in Bloemfontein. And uh, that game uh i that that whole season i played for the free state b team and uh they finished their season i want to say three weeks before and i went off to the to the farm to visit my, my my family on the farm and of course when you're on the farm you eat meat and you drink beer with the family and you get fat and you don't train and um the, the the Friday afternoon, I was getting ready. I was packing my little, you know, bry stuff to go to the Curry Cup final the next day. And the phone rang. And we still had one of those phones, those old phones, two, two shorts and a long trin, trin, trr. And I remember my mom answered and sh she came off the phone saying, you play in the Curry Cup final tomorrow. And I was shocked. I mean, I, I was so unfit. I, I picked up a few kilograms. I haven't really played with it. I've not played one game for the Cheetahs. I've only played for the B side. So I don't know their moves, nothing. Um, but one of the guys uh, fell sick the day before when he was in the hospital, um, uh, Reina Opperman. I think it was Reina Opperman. Um, fell sick and that was me. I literally jumped in the car that afternoon. And I, in fact, the next morning early, Drove to Bloemfontein, never played a Curry Cup game in my life, don't know the moves, and I had to play a Curry Cup final. And I, I would, until this day, I remember how nervous I was because I, I mean, in, in the other side was Uli Schmidt, uh, Yapi Mulder, all of those guys who were already Springboks. And here am I, no one, don't know anything. And I was so scared. I remember being so scared. <laughs> Anyway, ended up not going on. The Cheetahs Free State got a beating, I want to say, into the 30s or 40s in a final uh, that game. But I ended up not going on. And, and, um, and, you know, believe it or not, you know, people always tell you that your first game you want to play. I didn't want to play that day because I just knew that I might die on that field or embarrass myself because I don't know the move. So that was actually my very first Curry Cup game, but it didn't go on. That's quite incredible. And then, as I say, you did become a stalwart for the Cheetahs later on, uh, you know, sort of 1997. Obviously, the Cheetahs were in the final again uh, against Western Province, I think 14-12. And then there was the Halkhart Miller forward pass incident. Uh, and, and certainly at that point, people were talking about you as having been almost a certainty for the Springboks. Side. And I know that there were a lot of talented loose forwards around at the time obviously Corne Kricher, Rassi Erasmus, uh, Andre Fenter you know one of your colleagues at the Cheetahs and then you only got to make your test debut in 2000 uh, was it was it a little bit of a frustration that you had to wait so long? Yeah so so in 1997 um, I just came back from Italy so I was fresh in the country I spent uh, you know three years in Italy playing playing rugby um, and I came back and I must tell you, my first year, 1997, stand out to me uh, one of my best years and, and most enjoyable. And the reason is because I, again, I mean, I was I was already 25 or 26, but in my mind, I was a young man coming in. Um, and they were, like you say, my I lose forwards were myself, Andre Fenter and Rossi Erasmus. I mean, can you ask for a better trio to be in than, than, than those two legends? I mean, so for me... They've been playing for the Cheetahs. I come in from Italy and I'm and I'm part of this incredible loose four trio. And 
the, the whole Cheetah team at the time was just incredible again. Uh, that, like you said, that year we went back into the into the Curry Cup final. We had an incredible year. Um, Piet Kleinans was was our coach, and and that you 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 had to mention that Port Pass, didn't you? So <laughs> so we 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 ended up getting into the final down in Cape Town against Western Province, and 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 you missed Bobby Skinstad. So uh, Bobby Skinstad, Corne Krieger, um, like the real legends of South African rugby. They were kind of the loose forwards of, of the day, and. We we ended up uh, in the last thirty seconds playing down the line, and our hot passed the pass, and the pass drifted. Some say forward, allegedly forward. Others reckon maybe not forward. Um, and Jan Aram scored the try, but we got called back for for the forward pass. And, and yeah, that was. I mean, again, for me, it was a dream start. Again, starting my my professional career. In a team like that, going to the final, we didn't win, but going to the Curry Cup final for me was incredible. And and yes, it, it was great because uh, and people were talking about you know uh, me playing for the Springboks. And and yes, it was a bit fr- frustrating, but you know what, Peter, that's all part of life, man. In anything, in business, you know, I, I've got similar stories in business. You know, you 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 learn you. You make your way forward, and and sometimes it's tough, and sometimes it's hard. And and sure, it was a little bit hard. But when I made it, eventually, it made it so much better. You know, in two thousand, um, in Wales, Cardiff, uh, in in the Millennium Stadium, and and I'm and, and I'm a loose forward, and and they they put me on with probably ten or fifteen minutes to go, and just you know, one of the other highlights of my life. Eventually, I want to say I was twenty six at the time so so that's quite late right so a lot of guys become springboks quite early and so for me having to wait made it just so much better for me for the experience and how do you actually remember that day that day that you made your test debut against wales uh, and this is funny because the, the one thing i do remember is the because because obviously it also but it's a bit blurry when you when you when you do these things for the first time but i do remember this the field was mud um, they painted it. I, I remember the kind of there was a green paint over it just to <laughs> just to make it look like there's grass. And um, obviously, uh, I mean that was summertime. Well, winter time, so summer has already passed. So they played soccer on the pitch. And um, so I remember the field being a bit funny. But I also remember. I, I want to say that there was ten minutes that I was on, and I, I remember just running around like a crazy man, but not achieving much. <laughs> I remember coming off the field thinking. I've just run so much, but I've done nothing. You know that 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 over excitement. But um, of course, you know from there on, you know things and things have changed to me, to, you know, dramatically for me in, in rugby. So that was at the end of two thousand, and then there was a period where you were out of the picture again. But you were back in at the end of two thousand and one, on the end of your tour, uh, starting against France uh, at the Stade de France. Uh, if I've got this right, um, you can uh, confirm that for me. That was also the first time that you started for the Springboks in a Test match, AJ. And I've had quite a few former Springboks on this show who have told me that they made their debut coming off the bench, but it was only when they started for the first time that they felt that they were truly Springboks. Would you go along with that? You don't know. I, I, I disagree with that. For, for me personally, I remember that. I mean, like I said, I've explained that vividly to you now what I, what I remembered in that, in that Wales game. For me, that was the moment where I, I, I got my colors. Um, whether, so, 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 so you were talking about this French game now, and I actually don't. I do, I do remember. I think we lost. Um, but I don't actually remember much of the game uh, like it was my first game. So, so that, for me, getting my cap in Wales, that, that was the moment. Sounds good to me. Now, also at that time, Harry Fulhoun was the Springbok coach. And again, I've had quite a few former Springboks on the show tell me all sorts of stories about the Harry Fulhoun era. Usually, it's about the fancy suits and the smart shoes. What can you tell us about Harry Fulhoun as a coach? Well, I'll tell you an interesting story. Um, so there was a quite a long tour, uh, and there was an A and a B uh, team. There was a midweek team and a uh, test team. So whoever was uh, were playing on the bench on Saturday would uh, uh, directly go to the to the week midweek team and play that game as well. Uh, depending if you played too much too long on the, on the first on the weekend, sorry, you might only be on the bench on the midweek team. But I. I was on the bench uh, the first game, 
And remember that, so, so Harry Falloon was quite uh, advanced in terms of coaching and coaching staff. So there was a lot of coaches. There was Harry Falloon and, 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 and um, Mark Kraft, et cetera, et cetera. Mark Kraft, obviously a very strong character. Um, and, and if he wants something, he does it and he says it. And, and so there was, there was a bit of interesting conflict uh, they, in, in, at least in my, it, what, what concerns me, and I'll explain why. The, the day after the first test, uh, Harry came to me and said to me, next week, I'm putting it on after half time. The second test came, the, that midweek I played. The second weekend came, uh, I was after half time getting ready, game finished, no AJ on the field. Okay, no problem. Harry came to me after and said, next game, I'm putting you on half time. Midweek, come play the game. Third test, half time. I'm getting ready. I'm ready to play. I'm warming up. End of the game comes. AJ again. I'm not. I'm not put on. Again, he comes to me and says, "Listen, I promise you. This time, we're going to put you on before half time." And the same thing happened until the last test match in Twickenham. Uh, I want to say we played five test matches that that tour. If I, I might be wrong, but I think we played five. But anyway, the last test match. He came to me and said to me, I'm definitely putting you on. Get ready. 20 minutes into the game, I'm putting you on. 20 minutes in the game, I was warming up. Half time came, half time gone. I'm warming up. 20 minutes into the second half, nothing. Four minutes to go. Four minutes to go to the end of the game. Someone said to me, AJ on. Number 19 on. And I'm running. I'm sprinting on. There's a line out on the other side. I get to the line out. We get the line out. We play four or five phases. And it breaks down close to the England uh, try line. And, and the ref taps me on my shoulder says to me, you got to go off. I said, no, but I just came on. He said, no, you got to go off. And I look and, and they've got when Warren Brosnan was the other loose forward. And Warren Brosnan came running on and they, they sent me off with two minutes to go. I only played a test match for two minutes and they subbed me. And I was blown away. I don't know what was going on. I mean, I was light here and I was full of rubbish and I was angry. Anyway, only a few years later... Someone told me what actually happened uh, with Mark Kraft and Harry having a bit of a thing. Uh, Harry put me on and Mark Kraft took me off. With two minutes on the game, he took me off. So that, <laughs> if you ask me, what do I remember about that Springbok tour? That is what I remember about that Springbok tour. That is an unbelievable story. So, okay, that's a little bit about Harry, who was then replaced by Rudolf Strauli shortly thereafter at the beginning of 2002. What can you tell us about Rudolf as a coach? Yeah, so a lot of people have got a lot of stories about Rudolf. Um, I obviously was with Rudolf when he was coach of the Sharks as well. Um, and, and I quickly realized uh, Rudolf's style and, and, you know, how he does things and, and you know, the hoorah and getting guys excited. You know, and I'm an, and I also I'm an Afrikaans guy, and I went to the army. So, so I I I understood Rudolf quickly, and I knew what he was doing, and I knew what I had to do in the team to succeed. And I think Rudolf also kind of appreciated that bit of me, uh, you, you know, doing what 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 is going to be done. So, I mean, I was in and out of Rudolf's teams as well. Um, some started, some on the bench. Uh, Bob Skins, that and I were loose sports a few times uh, under 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 uh, him. Um, I, I, you know, the, obviously, like I said, there's a lot that happened with 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 Rudolf, uh, with Kamstalra and all those things. I've unfortunately missed that. I missed all the World Cups through either non-selection or through or through injury. Um, so it, it it you know I enjoyed him. A lot of people disagree with this, but for me, it, for me, I I enjoyed Rudolf. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, why not consider becoming a patron? It's my dream, guys, to do this full time, and with a small financial contribution, you can help me realize that dream. The link and the QR code is appearing on your screen right now, and I'll also put it down in the description area for you to go and click on at a later stage if you would like to do so. And by becoming a patron, I promise there will be great benefits for members. Now let's get back to the interview. Let's talk about the way that Strauli actually started off because we had a couple of test matches in June uh, against Wales, uh, Samoa, Argentina, some good results there as well. And then in the Tri-Nations, even though we were losing, the performances were actually pretty good. And it almost looked like, hang on a second, there might be something exciting brewing here. What was it like being part of that? 
Peter, yeah, you're asking nice stuff, but I mean, like I said to you, my it, it, it's my whole re- memory and, and and remembrance of of the time um, w- was exciting. It, it was fun. Um, Although, like I said, you've always got to bear in mind the way that, that Rudolf wanted to uh, coach and the way he managed people. Um, and and if you could, if you you know if you understood that, I think it would be good. But yeah, there was a there was a time where things were actually not looking too bad. Things were you know there were a few victories in the, in you know in the pipeline. So yeah, I mean I, I just got, got fond memories of that. I'm thinking specifically of that Van Achrieff last minute try and conversion against the Wallabies to win at Ellis Park. But something that I'm confident you will remember as well, AJ, the week before that in Durban against the All Blacks, uh, there was a supporter, Pitt Van Sale, who ran onto the field and tackled the referee. And you got involved in that a little bit as well. Talk to us about that moment. Oh, man, I, I always say when people talk about um, um, my rugby career, I always say, you know, you want to be remembered for scoring record tries or having record victories. But unfortunately, um, my name will always be synonymous with Pete Van Sale, which is a bit of a bummer. But okay, it's, it's one of those things that happened. But yeah, so we were, I was playing lock uh, that test. And I, I, I just remembered we were down in the scrum and I remembered seeing uh, a guy with uh, denim jeans, or there were there were denim jeans next to us, and, and my my immediate thought was, oh my god, so, so, you know, someone's on the field. And the minute I broke up, I just saw him, uh, you know, already uh, he was going down with with a tackle with the referee, and I forgot his name, uh, the referee. Um, uh, and the minute, I mean, I, I I've, I've watched the videos obviously uh, now a few years later. And I was quite impressed with my with my breakup in the scrum because by the minute they fell on the floor, I was there as well. And um, yeah, Richie McCall was quite quickly there as well. And we just tried to. I remember, I still remember trying to pull him off. Um, and and as we were pulling off, he was kind of getting a bit angry. And, and I remember saying him saying to me, swearing to me, AJ, you. And and that was just. A, and I just gave him a little bit of a, a warm up on the cheek, just one little one. And um, and that was it. And and the and the security guards came came on and and they took him off. But yeah, um, good memories, but not ones that I really want to, you know, have synonymous with with my with my name. And it was an unbelievable thing that happened. I mean, I remember watching it and what's going on here? How how did this guy even get onto the field? It was, it was unbelievable. Um, but speaking of the memories, and we just spoke about how the Strowley era actually got off to a good start and there were some encouraging performances. But then came the end of year tour in 2002. And it's as if things quickly spiraled out of control. A heavy defeat uh, to, um, to, to France and England, that 53-3. And then there was the defeat in the middle to Scotland as well. What do you think went wrong there? Yeah, so look, obviously that particular game, the England game, um, <laughs> when I met my wife, uh, Danielle, um, and we got married uh, two, two years ago, and when I met her five years ago, uh, we were just chatting about rugby, and she said, yeah, you, don't have, you can't believe it. I actually lived in London, and I went to that test match where we lost so far. I can't believe the spring moves were so bad then. And I was so embarrassed. I said, you can't believe it. I was playing that game. And uh, I mean, and that game, of course, we we were already struggling as a team. Things were falling apart a little bit. And then, of course, Janis uh, Lovaskakni got the the red card, I want to say, 10 minutes into the game. And so, you know, you're playing in a Springbok team that's that's not firing on, on all cylinders. And you play against an England team that is World Cup standard. I mean... Jason Robinson and all these guys just they were they were they were drilling teams so yeah that was the uh, writing on the wall um and again one of the memories that I really don't want to remember but um yeah I, I'm not sure exactly what was the what was the, the downward spiral at the time you know I, I think I think with Rudolf's uh coaching style I think I think that's not sustainable and I think especially when when it comes to non-Afrikaans players, um, so so I think uh, it got to a time where the players kind of started rebelling a little bit against, uh, when I want to say draconian coaching styles, what, what Rudolf uh, you know was known for, and I think kind of that was the the start of the of the demise. 
And then, as you mentioned, you missed out on the 2003 Rugby World Cup. And the year after that, Jake White had come in. And I'm interested to hear from you how much different the atmosphere was in the Bok camp under Jake White. Because, again, I've had some former Bok's here who said that if you compare it to what it was like at the, towards the end, certainly, of the Strowley era, it was chalk and cheese. Yeah, so, so, so again, uh, in, in, in any team, there are, there are guys that, that are going to get along with the coach and, and vice versa, the coach getting along, along with the guys and, and not. Um, I mean, Jake knows this. He does, I mean, I always say this. Uh, he, didn't, he didn't really like me. He, he kind of had to have me there for a few games because uh, there weren't any other players, but he didn't really uh, like me as a person, uh, my character. Um, and and if, if with Jake, if you're not in his inner circle, um, even if you make the team, it's very difficult. He makes life very difficult in the way that he treats you, speaks to you. Um, you know, Jake has always got a circle, and it's just an inner circle, and those guys are gold, and they can they got free reign, which is which is perfect. I mean, that, I'm not saying it's 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 it's, it's wrong. I, I was just not in that circle, so so for me. The memory with with Jake um, wasn't wasn't that great, um, but but Jake is I mean he's got his statistics talks for itself. So he's you know he, he's he's a great coach and, and and you know again you know with the Bulls as well, he's doing so well. Um, but but you but there was a bit in two thousand and four when we played in the Tri Nations that for me actually was, I want to say my highlight in the spring was apart from starting is when we actually won the Tri Nations here in Durban. Um, so so for me that time. Uh, man, that was a highlight for me. I, I, you know, I kind of still remember snippets of those games. You know, the the, the ones in Perth. It was, I think it was Perth where we where we had to sneak a victory over there, and, and, and eventually coming back and and you know uh, winning the Tri Nations yet in Durban in my in my hometown. So for me, that was possibly the highlight of my uh, Springbok career. And then, as it turns out, um, after that end of year two in 2004, you were again out of the picture. And I think you've touched on that and explained how and why that came to be. But you were back in 2006 and quite a time to make a comeback as well against the All Blacks in Rustenburg, the first and only time that we've played them at that venue. And Andre Pretorius with the last gasp penalty to win it for us. And we touched on it a little bit earlier that you were also involved in that test against the Wallabies at Ellis Park in 02 when Van Achrieff scored the last try and converted it to win it for us. What is it like being involved in test matches like that? Oh man, amazing. Uh, I mean, it's, 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 it's similar, I would imagine, to what the guys have done in the World Cup now, winning by 1.3 games in a row. Those are, those are, those are incredible moments in, in, in a country's uh, you know, top sporting team. So, I mean, I, again, often look back and I pinch myself for, for, for being just around at, at the time of, of those moments, um, yeah, it's wonderful. I mean, what, basically, uh, what happened with that last game against All Blacks in Rustenburg, um, from, from what I remember, uh, there were that was kind of almost a B team uh, because he was resting players for the World Cup. Or if I'm, 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 if I'm wrong, tell me. But something like that. And he kind of just told me uh, that, you know, look, I'm going to play you in this test match, but I'm, I'm not taking you further. And so, you know, I just thought, you know, at the time I was also get, uh, getting a little bit on and in, in terms of age. And I thought, well, this this is the best way for me to to give to give a give it a, a goodbye um, against the All Blacks. So, and, and what a wonderful way to go out! It was it was amazing. And then the following week, we made it two wins in a row by beating the Wallabies, as it turns out again at Ellis Park, since we were just mentioning uh, beating the Wallabies in Johannesburg. It has been a good ground for us against them. And as you said, that is where your test career came to an end. And I think you have explained a little bit, you know, your relationship with Jake White. But if I may ask you, how disappointed were you that it ended there? Um, no, Peter, not better. Look, of course, we always want more and we always want better. Even, even, even my retirement a few years later... You know, when those moments come, it is a bit sad because you, you feel like you want to do more. But in my career, I mean, at the, uh, I retired at 36 from rugby totally. But I mean, at, at the, the, the spring of retirement, I want to say I was 32 or 33 maybe. And, you know, that's a long career. That's a long time to play uh, a game that's very physical. I mean, I'm so lucky that I don't have real... Uh, scars left from rugby. I've got a few knees, but 
I was I knew at the time that uh, the the youngsters are just getting too fast and too strong, and um, you know I'm 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 starting to slow down the team, you know. But there there are certain there are other certain things that that you can bring to the team as a senior player, which is you know leadership, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But in terms of physical ability, I realize that. Um, the time is coming that, that I, I have to unfortunately pull the plug. And then speaking about disappointments, AJ, in an alternative scenario, it's quite possible that you may have been part of the team at the 1999 Rugby World Cup, the 2003 World Cup, and even the 07 World Cup. But of course, you were not present at any of those three. Is that a disappointment for you? Um, a little bit. Um, I mean, I was at the World Cup now in France, and, and, and I really enjoyed uh, being there as a supporter and you know for for the first time I actually realized how massive the World Cup is um, you know it, it's great playing test matches. I played 25 test matches I mean 25 test matches it, it's a lot of test matches to play for anyone so, so so I'm very grateful for for having played those test matches but it would have been great to add maybe a few test uh at the World Cup and, and you know, maybe a win at the World Cup. That that would have been amazing. But, Peter, I'm one of those guys that I look back with absolute no regret at my uh, career. I feel like I've had an incredible career. Um, it stood me in great stead for uh, everything post-rugby, business, life, etc. So I'm very happy uh, with, with the way it turned out. AJ, I was just looking at Chris Rousseau's uh, Springbok test record, uh, the 1995 Rugby World Cup champion. Now, I had him on the show a couple of weeks ago. He only played nine test matches, and seven of those were at the Rugby World Cup. So I'm, I'm pretty sure you would have been happy to swap a little bit with him. Yeah, that's amazing. I actually uh, was standing uh, in the queue at the airport in, in Paris uh, on the way out, and I looked around and Chris Rousseau was there. So we actually had a wonderful chat. We were standing for half an hour and I was so lucky to catch up with Chris again. And it was great to have him on the show as well. I must actually correct myself. He played nine test matches and six of them were played at the Rugby World Cup. It's an incredible record to have. So AJ, I've got to ask you, who was your toughest opponent? Um, I, I think obviously, well, not obviously. There are two guys that stand out. Um, one is Jerry Collins. Um, Jerry Collins and I played both loose forward and through the years of uh, Super Rugby, more so Super Rugby than Test Rugby because I, I, you know, I played a lot more games against him in Super Rugby. Um, we always had a full go at each other. And uh, th But the beauty about Jerry is he would drill me on the field and vice versa, but we would guard for a beer after a game every time and have a beautiful chat. And th those are beautiful times. Um, and then, of course, Bucky's uh, and I always had, um, you know, a little a little battles within the battle uh, on the field. So, yes, I would say those two guys physically has definitely been some of the toughest guys um, I had to ever play against. And thank goodness I don't have to do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a current player who you admire? Um, yeah, look, there's quite a lot. I mean, the old bloody Springbok side, um, you know, is is on the ball um, and of course Sia is just playing out of his boots I think he's he's the way that he's handling the leadership is is amazing the way he's just grasped that role um, is amazing um, I, I, I don't want to actually you know mention names because I promise you I am so impressed with actually the old stream of side what are you up to these days? Yeah, so I um, have got a business with my wife. Um, my wife is a registered dietitian, um, and we've uh, started a business called Danny Health. And and basically, it is an online platform where uh, Danny talks about various uh, uh, ways, or, or, for example, weight loss or, or diabetes, um, and and we also uh, do. Uh, master classes with sportsmen. So, for example, we've just done Stefan de Blanche. And I don't know if you know, if you've seen Stefan de Blanche's physique, that thing is unbelievably solid. Um, so, we've just done a master class with Stefan, and we will put it on the platform probably in a week or two from now, where Stefan talks about his nutrition and what he does. So, 
so yeah, we're very excited. It's going well. The business is pumping and it's something I do with my wife. So it's amazing. That's very cool. Uh, funny enough, speaking of Stefan, he was on this show about two months ago and he looks like he could be out on that field right now with, uh, with all the others, doesn't he? Absolutely. Okay, AJ, let's finish off by looking at that trivia question again. At the 2011 Rugby World Cup, the Springboks faced Fiji, Namibia, Samoa, and which other nation in their pool? Do you know the answer, AJ? I want to say, I want to say England. Not a bad guess. Uh, in fact, you are, let's say you're in the right area geographically. The correct answer is actually Wales. Okay, okay. Yeah, I was thinking it's going to be, it's going to be, in my mind, I thought it must be a European team and it must be one of the top teams. So oh, that, that was my thinking, but I couldn't, <laughs> I was guessing. No, absolutely. We won that match, thankfully, uh, but Wales actually went on to get to the semi-final, so I suppose a, a good World Cup for them. And from a Springbok point of view, we try not to talk too much about the 2011 Rugby World Cup, I think. Yes, 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 yes. absolutely not. AJ, let me say it was lovely having you on Front Row Rugby today. A uh, pleasure to listen to all those old stories, and I hope that we can have you on again in the future. Thanks, Peter. Good to have me. Thank you for having me. Have a nice day. Last time on Front Row Rugby, Pat Lambie was my guest. You can go and watch that video. It's appearing on your screen right now. Next time, I'll have another fenter here, Andre.